And then Barbara, if you want to begin, we we can begin at any time that you want. Okay. Well, I'm ready. And I assume that it's everybody is here and as eager as I am to hear what I speak. So formally, hello, and welcome to the second of the Ambassador Lecture Series initiated by the American Tapestry Alliance. These lectures seek to expand our horizons and influence how we think of tapestry today by introducing us to a diverse array of artist weavers who might be working in different cultural traditions or locations. This spring, I became the Director of Education for the American Tapestry Alliance. I was very hesitant at first to accept this volunteer position, but then I thought of all the good I could do in this role, not to mention the people I would meet to share my passion for the advancement of tapestry. I cannot stress enough the cliche that volunteering gives back to the volunteer as much as the volunteer gives to the organization. Please become, consider becoming an ATA volunteer. I first met Wadek in 1992 at an international symposium in Łódź, Poland. Then he wove tapestries with a neutral palette of sisal and hemp and linen and whatever materials were available in Poland when it was still behind the Iron Curtain. His work was arresting and tactile and perfectly designed, and it still is. Budek is an innovator and a visionary who sees tapestry from a different place. Wojciech Sigan studied in the Industrial Design Faculty at the State Higher School of Fine Arts in Woods from 1974 to 80. After graduation, he continued his personal creative journey, focusing particularly on artistic fabric. In 1991, he founded the magazine Texty Textile Fiber Art and acted as both publisher and editor in chief until 1998. As well, since 1992, he's been a member of the editorial committee of the Journal of Fiber and Textiles in Eastern Europe. In 1994, he became head of the Artistic Textile Studio at the Academy of Fine Arts in Gdansk. From 97 to 2018, he also worked at the Institute of Textile Architecture of the Woods University of Technology in the Faculty of Material Technology and Textile Design. And in 2002, he became a professor. In 2008, he left his position in Gdansk and started working as the head of the unique fabric workshop um, in Woods at the Academy of Fine Arts. In his non-academic activity, Vladimir focuses mainly on pushing the traditional boundaries of his art, tracing new possibilities of artistic expression, creating unique textiles. He places special importance on non-standard methods of work construction moving very far away from the standard rectangle, and thus introducing and enabling addition of light through the use of fiber optics. Sigan has participated in over 210 group exhibitions and 40 solo exhibitions in Poland and abroad. He is a laureate of numerous awards in national and international competitions, and has served as a juror many times, even for ATA. He is the author of several publications, magazines, and journals. His textiles can be found in the collections throughout Europe, and one of his early works lives in my home where I get to enjoy it every day. A few organizational notes, re-questions, and answer section of the talk, which will last for about 15 minutes after we get to enjoy Sigan's lecture and slide presentation. I'm sure we will all have questions. I'd like to acknowledge Christina Sadich and her daughter, um, Justina, tapestry artist who lives in Ottawa, Canada, and who are standing by to help with any translations problems. While Vladek's English is amazing and he is more than fluent, there may be English terms he does not know. For this reason, please type your questions into the chat and make them short and clear. Vladek has generously offered to answer the more technical questions we do not get time for by email in the future. So now I'm going to turn the screen over to you, Vladek. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.
Before I uh, turn off my camera, I would like to invite all of you who would like to spend uh, this hour uh, together with us and uh, listening what I could uh, what I could say to you. So uh, feel welcome and excuse me, my English abilities they are, as you can see, quite simple. Okay. Okay, uh, the, can you see the screen from my computer? Yes. With, yes. The, with the first page, um, with the name of my city, it is quite difficult. It is quite, um, uh, it, it is only four letters, but the pronunciation is quite complicated. Uh, we pronounce it Uj, but uh, majority of the people from outside from from other countries tell Lodz. It is name of my city, and I think that it is first uh, point from presentation which I would like to tell to you about my my way of of of, of uh, my creativity, my work, my uh, activity, uh, which is not a historical town. Uh, it was the first mention about which became in 13th uh, century, but as an agricultural uh, vill village. Uh, in 18th century, uh, which uh, gets some uh, special rights from the government of Polish kingdom uh, to organize some uh, industrial district uh, uh, with specialization of textiles. And uh, from this moment, many of uh, entrepreneurs from the neighboring countries, uh, from Germany, from Czech, Slovak, Czech, pardon, from Czech, uh, also uh, from Russia, and uh, very strong and numerous uh, majority of Jewish entrepreneurs started here to build its uh, its company, its uh, its factory textile factory and this uh, the style architectural style of the city is uh, eclectic because uh, there is more many historical style of, of architecture you can find here new new renaissance new baroque new classicism uh, because the owners of the factories which in the very short time, get a fortune of, of money. He wanted to have palaces uh, with every style, every his historical style. So it is uh, a special uh, feature of our city, of our uh, ten center of our city, the eclectic uh, palaces, eclectic building from um, from the people who li lived here. A majority of these buildings are in bad condition because uh, in contrary of the other cities of Poland, which was destroyed during the Second World War, uh, which wasn't bomb bombard bombarded, was destroyed by the bomb. So it is architecture is original, but uh, it is plus and minus at the same time because it is in the bad uh, condition. And after coming uh, uh, Polish Poland to the European uh, community uh, and with the support of European community, uh, there started a revitalization of majority of, of uh, industrial to post post industrial um, places in which which became. Uh, since this time, uh, places of uh, for cultural uh, uh, purpose, uh, for uh, offices, for uh, some gastronomic center, uh, commercial uh, galleries, 
and it uh, seems to be very interesting because it is an event which is a magnet for uh, many visitors who comes to Łódź uh, see for seeing how uh, one can be revitalized uh, post post-industrial architecture. Uh, one of this uh, big um, complex of factories, uh, one the most of the the most important is uh, Ludwig Geyer uh, complex of factory established in 1820. Uh, it was a, a wool factory uh, with first of the on the Polish uh, the, the kingdom uh, steam engine engine and it was a revolution it was new and after uh, Geyer many other manufacturers uh, also established in their uh, factories steam uh, factories and uh, the pro products of, from these uh, factories it goes uh, to Russia and China uh, from 60s, uh, since uh, 1960, uh, this uh, complex of factory of Geyer became a uh, head of the uh, Central Museum of Textiles in Łódź, which you can see uh, now on the picture. Uh, the name of this complex in among the Łódź part, uh, habitants is White Factory because majority of the factories were built with the red bricks. Um, this one was an exception. The style, I, I, as you can see, it is a little, little bit classical and it was covered by the uh, white um, cover and it was an exception. It was from the front. This is from the back. Uh, this factory, uh, which became a Central Museum of Textile on the uh, 70s, uh, undertake the initiative to organize International Triennial of, Triennial of Tapestry. And this initiative became um, because of big success of Polish School of uh, um, Artistic uh, Fabrics uh, during the uh, uh, subsequent uh, Lausanne uh, Biennale of Tapestry in Switzerland. Uh, fifth, fifth edition of uh, Lausanne Biennale was presented uh, in Poland uh, as a proof the Polish uh, presence, a strong presence on the world of the textile art on this, on this time. I saw this exhibition, it was in Warsaw, and I think it was it, it was in this 1971. And I think it was one of things which this, the, which uh, inf influenced my, um, my way of study and uh, way of professional life. Other thing which decided to influence this was a school which I finished. After the College of Decorative Art, uh, I chosen a study of the State Higher um, School of Art in Łódź. Can you hear me? Excuse me. Yes? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. I would like to be sure. Uh, Mm, this uh, this uh, higher higher school of uh, art was established after the Second World War in 1974 as uh, one of 19 universities in uh, our city, and it, uh, the, in this um, academy there was only one and the first in Poland department of textile and clothing design in Poland. Uh, in this time, it was uh, no, very motivating for, for young artists uh, to, to study uh, textile. Uh, 
I studied uh, there between 1974, 1980, and one of the of my supervisor uh, were professors, which I would like to mention today because I feel uh, need to 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 tell my grateful to them. Uh, which uh, is, um, signs of their creativity I can find in my creativity today. One of them is Professor uh, Roman Modzelewski. Second one is Professor Antoni Starczewski. And third one is Professor Janina tworek pizgalska uh, When I'm asking myself what in my creativity I can find from taken from them, uh, now it is for, for me clear, but uh, earlier I didn't realize how much I taken from uh, its, um, its position, its opinion, uh, its uh, way of thinking. Uh, I've taken from them as some uh, some parts of my creativity in the noticeable way. It was natural way. It was imprinted uh, in the natural way in my creativity. And then after the years when I'm a professor on the same school when um, they used to be, I can see it more clearly and I think that I should to, uh, to express my gratitude to them because I owe it to, to them. Uh, I finished my study in AT and just one year after uh, in Poland, from the polit political reason, the um, martial uh, law has been established for a few years. And it seems a little bit uh, like a pandemic time. Uh, the civil rights was suspended for a few, few years. Even we couldn't uh, change the places. Uh, we was uh, asked to stay home. Uh, for me, it was quite a uh, fruitful time because I had a lot of time for for my creativity for working. And it was time when I established my credo, my the most um, important for me uh, points, which uh, became basic for, for, for my next creativity. And from this moment, I realized one of the things which I realized from this time, it was that I do not know to imitate the reality in the woven medium. It is not interesting for me to do with uh, flowers, birds, cats, and uh, uh, landscapes. Uh, if I thought about landscapes, I thought it by the filter, by the um, medium by the uh, possibility of medium of me me textile medium uh, so first i would like to found a, a simple possibility to build a space uh, in, in impression uh, using some uh, uh, method of uh, pointing uh, some uh, method of uh, build uh, a scale of uh, gray grayscale, which goes from the darkness toward light, and for this reason, I built some some scale, pardon, some scale of uh, uh, black points on the white uh, background. Uh, the density is changing toward darkness. There are some places which is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in the middle. So there is a balance between black and white. And the same 
uh, scale goes toward black. Uh, originally, it, 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 this scale it was built. It consists from thirteen uh, element. Um, after some tries, some few years, uh, it became nine. But finally, I I've chosen only this one in the middle when the balance between the white and black is. Uh, established but allowed me to show how the warp is constructed and from this time i tried to uh, to to looking for the answer why why the um, woven woven pieces of art uh, should be done on the parallel uh, um, warp. I try to move this um, establishing um, state and to give the warp uh, the different directions. And as a project, as a um, cartoon, uh, I used some um, Xerox, uh, which allowed it me to, sorry, which allowed it me to uh, to build very free way uh, the, the, um, work in every direction, and this is a realization. This is pre, um, a project. This is a realization, and it is it was very interesting for me at the moment because, uh, you, as you can see, the white and black stripes uh, illustrate the uh, state of warp strength which I used. Some of them is radial and uh, con uh, converging. Other ones are uh, diagonal and in, in different direction goes. And what is in, interested in, in this idea? The beginning is not as a usual from the down to, to up, but beginning is on the places which log logical on this place as starting, po uh, starting point of the warp. The next step on this way of thinking was to use radial warp. Uh, I tried to do this, this because I wanted to refer to the Renaissance um, conver converging perspective used by the uh, Renaissance uh, painters. And uh, I wanted to, to close these two uh, way of thinking, the interpretation of the air uh, and convergent perspective with warp, which is uh, in my opinion, such important um, element of tapestry as weft, because usually in the in the uh, restrictive definition of tapestry, its weft is dominated. Its weft is this medium which uh, keeps all uh, transport uh, transportation of our meaning, our um, our expression. I would like to give chance to the warp to be uh, as to, to, to be um, also uh, such important. And for this reason I uh, for this reason I try to uh, build to, to build my uh, um, warps from one point and after some tries, uh, I realized that its point can be on the um, inside of the field of picking, or it could be also on the edge, on outside. I will show it in the little sketch, um, which will be shown in a few minutes. Here you can see uh, the consequences of making warp not traditional, not 
paralele. For example, in, in this uh, tapestry, the starting point is the line. Uh, here, the warp is starting and it is strange to the edge of the uh, wooden frame and fixed them with the tucker. And beginning of weaving, we start here in the lowest place and is built there around the point of finishing this this uh, inner uh, shape and the same is here so as we will see in the, from my, in the picture from my uh, from my um, studio uh, it it gives very interesting consequences for example here there are three points of a starting uh, here is one here go radially other is here outside of the field of picking and third one is here so this uh, part in the in the middle was started here from here and this one was started from here and from here Excuse me, so from time to time, I will ask you, am I understandable? Barbara? Yes. Am I understandable? I think so. It's new concepts, but it's, it's really intriguing. Okay. If, if it will be completely understandable, please give me a sign. I will try to, to do it in some other way. Okay? okay. Yes. From this, uh, in, in this uh, sample, you can see uh, the example when the starting point is along this shape inside of the uh, woven pieces. Uh, work goes outside and the outer um form contour is a rectangle but it is not obligatory you will see that it will be also that the the inner shape is uh, uh, designed from other way than outside uh, shape what is the warp made of it is in majority it is linen linen oh. in some of my pieces i use polypropylene uh, but it is it is an exception usually it is uh, linen flex for example in this tapestry the starting point is the little hole in the middle you, and the warp goes, goes in every direction outside of the center. Uh, some of the picture you will see twice because I will show them is telling about technical uh, problems. And afterward, I will show it once again from the exhibition spaces. Here you can see detail of the same work which you can see before. And uh, it is detail which show my favorite two materials. It is sisal and black wool. I like this, uh, these two materials because they work well together. Uh, sisal is very, was very important for me because on the time when I started to learn uh, weaving uh, it was the cheapest one uh, uh, the most easily available material for me and uh, it was very good for dye dyeing uh, it took very well every colors mm, but uh, but uh, 
I prefer it always its natural state, uh, which is a little bit sunny, a little bit as uh, beige, you know, color of Caesar. It, it is not white. The conception of composition is black and white, but white is not really white. It is it is beige or a little bit goldy value. Uh, I like the endings, which you can see here. Um, it, it is the second reason for which I like Saizo, because it's, it uh, uh, seems to me a little bit as an magnified thread of uh, flags of, of linen seen by the microscope. Uh, on this slide, you can see the scale of gray, which I uh, showed you uh, before. You can see the different density of the white points on the black uh, backside, which built this um, feeling of space. Uh, in this work, I would like to pay your attention that the starting point is here on this hall, at these two halls, and um, uh, warp is a uh, strained uh, radial way, but as you guess, when it goes further from the center, the warp became uh, more rarely more than more rarely uh, she needs to be it needs to be uh, um, uh, made uh, the, its density should be added so uh, in some moment it is necessary to add additional thread of warps because if not it would be very uh, very rarely the, the quantity of the, the of the uh, threads of the warp would be uh, no, not allowing to to keep the consistency of the work. These white points, there are the places where the additional warps is added. So so we started, for example, with some 14, 15 thread of warp, but after a few centimeters of weaving, circular weaving, I, I'm obliged, I, I have to get additional pair, pair of uh, threads of the warp for keeping consistency. Okay. Another way of warping, it is warp carved. In this case, it is similar because it is a central composition, but the way of warping is completely another. The starting point is this line, and uh, the tapestry is built from the elongated triangles. And after each pair of triangles, whole set is pushed down on the vertical loom. So then, because of different of higher, here one centimeter, here 15 centimeter, the whole set starts to curve and turn. So this, this uh, way allowed to, be, to do some composition which goes um, he built an arc, circles, arc, it depends on the larger of the, um, of the weaving, uh, of the picking uh, field. So it is the second, my favorite way of warping. Here you can see uh, the way of uh, uh, curving uh, around the uh, arc, and here is around the, an angle. Uh, I don't know how this is English, but 
it is thinking is the same, but only the the way of um, changing direction of the warp is is a little bit different. You can see here the detail of this work. The warp is parallel here, but it is turning. It is it is not rectangle. And the next one, which I, I tried to involve, uh, it's one way of um, uh, warping. It is three-dimensional. It is, I oh, sorry, I would like to go back. I don't know. Okay. Uh, it is made from the stripe, uh, stripes of the thread of the warp, um, strengthened on the horizontal and vertical uh, direction and um, crossing and perpendicularly. Here you can see when it was built. Uh, this way of warping and weaving allowed to see what is behind the woven object. It is very light, uh, with a very um, space giving the feeling of this is space and lighting. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, to express uh, to explain why you chosen uh, the pick and pick uh, technique of weaving. It is taken from the Kilim um, techniques way, uh, which I showed to few fly slides before. When white stripes is black and other white is wine, it is made from two different warp, uh, two different wefts. Sorry. Uh, when every black one covers pairs thread of wool, and every light uh, weft covers every impairs of the uh, warp. Uh, thanks of this uh, wave, uh, you can see how the uh, warp was strengthened, and you can see here on the. It is it, it is changed my way of make a project because uh, I thought that before uh, when I did the project it was rather painting on graphic which I I tried to to imitate to 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 interpretate and um, woven technique but here this way of thinking it is more genetically uh, connected with the, with the most important uh, thing of the weaving, crossing, weft, and warp. And here I would like to highlight you the different consequences with this uh, uh, way of warping gives. You can see here on the framework a way of strengthening the uh, warp starting points. It is logical. You cannot do with uh, higher than if if you have no the basis. So you start from the lowest point, and it is it uh, the, uh, it gives um, it gives you the direction. It is not a word is said by me, but I hope you understand. If not, you will ask me after finishing this projection. But you can see uh, the starting point is not from the bottom up. It is from the middle outside. And here you can see, you can write the, the inner shape, the initial border from which the tapestry starts. Then you, is uh, straightened uh, your warp and fix it in, on the frame with tucker. And you start weaving according to the logic. And during the weaving, 
they appear some very interesting shapes, which was not predictable before. And it is very interesting because for, for um, it is interesting because it is not boring. It is surprising. You will not uh, to to know exactly which uh, shape you will have tomorrow after uh, making another part of your weaving. And uh, it is interesting also from this point that uh, the um, so-called um, by the way shapes sometimes are such interesting that they could be an attempt and suggestion to to futures to the further you know future realization another interesting consequence of this way of working is that you can extend your size which your primarily uh, planet. Uh, if you feel that it would be better to do it bigger, larger, higher, you you can do that, uh, making your warp thread longer and having bigger frame. It is very easily. It is very very simple. And other consequences very interesting is that um, you, when you are uh, watching your weaving process, you can find out that at some moment it is okay, it is enough. You are not obliged to continue. It is not obligatory to do rectangle of square of round circle. You can do okay, I like. It is satisfying for me. Uh, here's this uh, the Syria of um, picture from my studio. You can see that I'm liking like, I'm like working on the fr wooden frame. Uh, from each realization, I do it especially because it depends on the on the shape, on the form of of uh, expectation. Uh, harness loom, it is impossible to do, uh, to, to use in this case. Additionally, I have to think that uh, with weaving, with a cir um, circular weaving, I need to turn all set because I cannot weave upside down. So I turn my frames su successively. Here you can see the way which I add uh, additional thread of the warp with the metal little hooks, little metal hooks and straightened uh, strings uh, fixed with tucker to the uh, edge of the frame. Here is a sample of the work when, when the uh, center is invisible. You can see here the, the philosophy, philosophy. It is big, probably too big word, but you can see the system. You can, you can decide which inner shape uh, could be starting point. Then you uh, strain your warp it could be done in the regular way or with some modification. And then you start weaving from the starting point, but uh, you can finish on the very uh, free moment. It not, it, if, if the starting point is square, it is not said that the fi um, final uh, shape should be square as well. It could be round, it could be triangle, it could be uh, some, uh, some irregular square. Uh, here are the sk sk uh, sketches 
for this uh, way of uh, placing the place uh, placing the starting point it could be on the middle it could be on the, uh, the free chosen place uh, of the fielding of the picking it could be on the edge each one it could be outside as a starting point but other way is starting point i sorry i would like to go back i don't know <laughs> how could i go back okay let's say it is probably too boring <laughs> I, I like to speak about it because it's my it is my professional life, but probably for you it is uh, this uh, morning. This is my studio. You can see different frames. Some of them are hanged, hanged on the wall. Some of the painting tools. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I have some uh, uh, people who help me to, to weave, and in this occasion to learn weaving. Mm, I don't hide my, people ask me very often uh, how I did it. Mm, I don't hide, I show, mm, I'm thinking that it would be very good if somebody would take something from my experience and continue it, its activity. And thinking this way, I, and I decided in the one of the exhibition to show the, uh, my tapestries, my works on the working frames. So I took the frames on the gallery and I showed, I told, I showed to the viewers how I did it. It was very easy to explain. Wow. And in the same exhibition in the very post-industrial space, uh, I showed the prints, uh, digital prints uh, of detail of my works because I would like to encourage the viewer to pay atten bigger attention to the details. I realized that uh, a lot of viewer uh, looks for the tapestry from two perspectives, the, from far, from very close. Some of, the, of them um, close easier, uh, nearly with the nest, with uh, close to the tapestry, to, to, would like to see how it was made. So for, giving them the reason to pay this attention. I made uh, uh, oversized details and I printed them on the, uh, on the big panels for highlighted uh, the things which, are, which I think are the most important in this work. Ah. I, I'm afraid I'm talking too long. To, 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 okay, I will be. I will say more quickly. In some moment, I decided to realize to 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 put in my work light. Uh, I saw in different exhibition the works, the woven works with uh, optical fiber, but. Uh, Practically, I started to do it in uh, 2013 uh, after the meeting of Danish artist Astrid Kroch in Wood during one of the journal. Uh, she, she showed there uh, some curtain of, of uh, the fiber textile, fiber optic, and uh, I invited her to, to have a uh, talk to my students. She came and she take with her a few words and uh, some tools, and it, it encouraged me to 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 start uh, to in uh, to implant the really light. Uh, I say really because for, uh, before I tried to do some experiment with uh, black light, 
but it was not really light. Here, the LED uh, LED uh, uh, generators allowed me to make a composition which have possibility to, to changing um, intensity of light and intensity of color. It was very interesting for me and uh, I do this to, 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 <laughs> till today because uh, there is a lot of features which, which fulfill my expectation from the textile. I always uh, was um, convinced that there is not there is not color the color this is not a, a picture a painting important in the tapestry in my opinion the most important is combination of idea construction and material and doesn't matter if it is red or blue or white or other color. Not color is important. Color is important for painters. For us, the tapestry could be also uh, uh, changing the color every five minutes. But in each case, it should keep its independence, its autonomy, artistic autonomy. So this way of using the light, which changed its intensity and color, became for me the way of exploring PMMA fiber optics, which is acrylic, uh, acrylic uh, fiber, uh, which is very transparent. So if it is not uh, turn on the electricity, it is practically invisible. But, and, and in this place, you can see nothing. It, it, is, it is empty space. But after uh, putting in the uh, electricity, uh, it became the main heroes. It uh, tell the main story. It is very important for me to give to my works uh, two lives, day life, day life and night life. Even if the viewer don't want to put electricity on, the tapestry should keep individuality and autonomy. But with light, it should take additional energy, another meaning, another possibility on influence the good, uh, good um, mood, climate, uh, welfare, uh, well-being uh, feeling. Last year's uh, the pandemic times became a time when I had more time uh, for make an experiment. Uh, so I uh, decided to do smaller size at form and uh, looking for different um, variation, different modulation. Uh, it, as you can see, it is the uh, compositions from the very simple geometric element but combining in the way that um, underline its individuality by different uh, way of warping and using different materials. Uh, 
uh, I, I decided not to uh, include into my presentation the video because uh, of a risk that my um, uh, router, my communication with uh, internet uh, could be in danger. Uh, so you can see here the works which uh, during the exhibition uh, are proceeded in changing. The uh, intensity of light is changing. The order of the appearing of light is changing as well. So the uh, element of time is became very important for them. Some of them uh, start to shine uh, earlier, some goes out and then other appeared as um, uh, the new. And it is the same work but in the different way of hanging. It is made from fiber optics as well and some uh, PCV uh, tubes. The last newest Syria traps is using the uh, color changing light. Is anybody here yet? Yeah. <laughs> We're all listening. We're like amazed. I will finish just a few minutes. Give me give me a few minutes. Uh, I have not to say that there are the two-dimensional form, that this is only the uh, uh, impression that they are three-dimensional. Wow. And the newest one, the last one, uh, Syria made just uh, one year before. It is very simple form with linen, made with linen and optical fibers. Everyday lives. It is side effect of pandemic time. I I, I have to say that uh, this is a six uh, parts which changing changing the color and uh, intensity of light uh, randomly. So th there is not static. It is, uh, it is dynamic, but in the very quiet way. Okay, and then I, I, I thought to finish my presentation with this newest work, but in, at the summer, as the summer, I would like to remind you the five works which I showed during the Eternal in Wood, which is the uh, the most motivating element of my professional life. It was during the, uh, the um, many years. As you can see, the first time was invited, I was invited there in 88. I did a very large, as my possibilities work, it was four meter half long and two meter eight, uh, 16 high. Uh, as a Polish participant, we could participate in every second edition. So you can see it was six edition. Now you can see eight edition in 90, 90, uh, 95th. Uh, this work was uh, done with a uh, pigment which uh, goes in reaction with black, black uh, light in 2001. Orbitre get a Grand Prix in 2007. This is an empty space for those who couldn't see it a uh, person. And in 2011, uh, 2011 uh, fireworks, and it was last time when I was participant of Utrinale, after changing regulation, I was not anymore accepted. So I go to retreat. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your patience. I'm sorry if it was too long and if it was too boring. If you had question, I would, I, I would like to answer directly or 
if it will be too difficult, I will write you back if you gave me address for which I could give your answer to. Thank you very much for your time, for attention. Thank you, Barbara, for inviting me and Maggie for helping to organize it. Thank you, Christina and Justina, for being big support for me. It gives me comfort that if I fall in, in panic, you will help me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, you did very well, Vodek. You did very well. And we did you didn't need any help today. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yes, you were very awesome. Uh, absolutely mind-blowing. Okay. Thank you very much. Can you stop sharing your screen now? Yes. I did it. Okay, but maybe we want to see your face. <laughs> Yes, one moment. It is my uh, favorite. There you are. <laughs> well, we have a few questions in the chat. Oh, they're coming in fast and furious now. Okay. So I'm going to try and figure out how to do the technology. Um, huh. Just several people are just saying, thank you. The body of work is stunning. Thank you for sharing your journey with us all. It's so inspiring. One person, Deborah Kogan, has asked, and it was a question I had, whether your warps are stiffened in some way because they come to the edge and then sometimes they continue in a straight line. Did you understand, Vodek? In, uh, I'm not sure. Chris, you in in your radial tapestries that come out from the center, they get to the border of the tapestry, but some of the warp threads keep going. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I could go going outside because uh, uh, mm, this way I would like to uh, highlight the, the direction of the warp threads of warp. If I cut, if I cut it uh, according to the, uh, the um, rectangle or uh, regular uh, edge of the geometric form, uh, it would not be such good seeing uh, what direction the warp was trained. So I used, it's a, some, sometime I use some plastic uh, little tube, which are, um, which are prolongation of the uh, field of the uh, thread of the warp. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Jin Dobre says one person. Jin Dobre. <laughs> I um a question that I have is that you you talked about how color is for painting, but you're adding color now. Your works are dealing with geometry and and gradations of of light to dark, but your titles are very evocative. So obviously there's more happening in your head while you're making the work than purely uh, artistic considerations of shape and size. So you would, you would like to ask yeah. me about the, the genesis of the titles? I think so. Yes. Tak. Yes. Um, I, uh, I, I like to... to think about the titles because from a few reasons. First, uh, the process of weaving is such long that I have a lot of time to, to, mm -hmm. to think in, in which name I would like to, uh, which name I would like to give the work for uh, the better uh, identification of them after. Some, sometimes it is very easy, for example, uh, the cycle Y is because of shape of letter Y. But uh, sometimes, uh, for example, um, in the work uh, and where am I now, which is the title of my presentation, it is uh, the main um, problem which I get during pr uh, proceeding, weaving uh, uh, my work. I, I'm really asking myself in which 
place is uh, am I on this moment? Because uh, I, I knew that the work would be exposed after a few months and it was at, I will be in the other place in this in wow. this moment. But uh, when while woven, woven uh, I'm I was in the uh, martial law, for example, because it was martial martial law in Poland this time. And uh, this question I give uh, for the several other uh, exhibitions. Every, every time I, I'm asking myself in which situation, in which place place I, I am now. What are my ability? What are my possibilities? What are my uh, available technical uh, materials and methods? Uh, I don't want to, to, to stop in some past, past time, past. So from this one, I would like, I, I told that uh, I would like that, that, that my title, titles of my work gives twice the uh, way. Uh, the one is what I would say and other what it would say my tapestry as itself. Ah. So uh, uh, if I'm asking, where am I now? It's me asking me where where am where am I now? And my tapestry also ask themselves where my tapestry is now. <laughs> it is quite complicated, but but you know it is only pretext. It is pretext for speaking, for asking, for uh, I, I'm not a fan of uh, uh, giving the title no title because it is nothing. <laughs> Yeah, but many weavers talk about a dialogue on the loom, where they yeah. they ask the tapestry, it responds. You go in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, Heron LeBlanc has asked if you could talk about how you incorporate the fiber optic wires into the weaving, and then turn the lighting on and on. And Justyna, pomóż. Ona chce, chce się dowiedzieć, jak, jak ty wkładasz te, te microfiber wire, jak, czy ty robisz, czy tkasz tymi microfiber wire, czy je później dokładasz like, okay. Op, na, na, afterwards. Ok, dzięki, dzięki, już to, jestem pewien. Ok, so uh, my, my answer is uh, I weave with them. When I started to use uh, optical fiber, uh, the technology doesn't allow to, to, it was not uh, flexible enough. And very often uh, it was crutched during the process. But now it, the technology goes on and uh, this acrylic fiber allowed to the quite uh, flexible using. And yes, I would. There, there, uh, I use uh, uh, optical fi fiber both to the warp and to the weft. Not always. In some work, it is only uh, warp uh, added with uh, optical fiber. In other, it is only weft, but also there are the work. I made the work with uh, when uh, in both sets, warp and weft were made with optical fiber. But there is one uh, expectation. Uh, I didn't use optical fiber itself. It is uh, every time uh, supported by some other uh, natural uh, materials as linen or sisal or wool, because um, it gives, you know, uh, this optic fiber itself is invisible. It is, it is nothing. It is, it is transparency. And if you have no electricity, nobody would see them. Yeah. So um, 
Cynthia has asked how you add extra warp around the center. I also was curious, you showed pins hooking the new warp on. Yes, but when you finish the, weaving, you must take the pins away. So what keeps everything in place? Uh, no, uh, the, the hooks are keeping off during the process. Um, it, it is enough uh, after, uh, after um, installing a little hook on the edge of the picking field. And after picking three, four times, then there and back, you can take the hook out because the thread is already stabilized and it is need not anymore to be strengthened with the hooks. And this hook you can took in other place where the warp is not uh, uh, density to enough. But so you need a certain tension to do the weaving. So that's what the hook provides. Yes, but on, only in the beginning, this tension is yeah. important in the first moment for, for mm -hmm. first, first two, three picking. After then, it is keep itself and you can take off your hooks and take in other place and go mm -hmm. further. So it just keeps growing. Yeah. Oh, she'd also like to know if you're going to write a book and explain yeah. all this. <laughs> No, I, I I don't think so. I don't think so. I, uh, no, not yet. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see the chat. Um, Christina, can you see it? Um, yes, yes, I can oh, see. Can you read the, the oh, book actually comment? Okay, just a moment. I have to. Uh, Oh, actually, I don't see the chat. Okay. So I can help. Um, so okay. Maria Robinson says, uh, yes. thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I always see your work in the Brown Grotes Gallery, and she's always uh, uh, really impressed by it. And she's very glad that she has the chance to actually see the work. Thank you. My Polish Bye. pronunciation leaves much to be desired. Ah, oh, this is an, um, Jennifer asks, is there a resonance with basketry techniques? Have you ever done basketry, Sigan? No, I, I don't, but I agree. Uh, this kind of thinking, uh, of thinking and about construction, it is the, uh, it came from, from basketry. Yes, it's, it is true. I'm agree. Yeah. But basketry is uh, hard, it is stiff, rather. Yes. And textile is uh, smooth, is, uh, is flexible. So you can roll up your tapestries even with the fiber optics? I, I can roll, I do that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, I can roll it. It is very light, this material is uh, very light. The, the problem technically, if somebody would like to know it, is that it could be uh, um, connected with electricity. So the light became from the lamp. So if you, made, if you make a, a, a small format, size, small size it works, you should be aware that you should put under this small work lamp and uh, cab cable for electricity and it is make some tension uh, which make different deform the mm -hmm. the small format works it is it, it is uh, the problem yeah so like behind you um there's a cable coming down from the piece and a little white square, which I assume is an on and off switch, right behind where you're sitting. Yes. So that yes. is how you turn it on and off? To jest tak podłączone do prądu, że, prądu, że masz ta wtyczka, co spada, to jest, że włączasz i wyłączasz, tak? Tak, to znaczy to jest, excuse me, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, 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 you can,
if, if you can see me now. Yes. Here is. Right. Yeah. It is very um, safety because it is not high uh, tension of electricity. Uh, the uh, cable and uh, fiber optic doesn't warm uh, after the hours of the uh, working. It is still cold. It takes very little uh, electricity because it is very economic and the uh, uh, time of living of this uh, LED generator uh, is um, projected for 50,000 hours. Wow. I cannot, I, I cannot imagine. I, try, I don't try to, to, to count uh, how long time it is, but you can leave it safe for all the night and uh, for, for a long time, it, it is safe. So what's next? Now that we're out of the pandemic, back in the world, the lights are on again? I don't know what is next. Uh, I just finished my exhibition, which I organized this year because of uh, uh, Trinale, which is held in which this year it is 17 edition of this of this event uh, i do not participate on this uh, uh, edition because uh, i was not accepted but it is normal uh, i also was juror and i could i i, I should i had to uh, say uh, yes or no in different uh, situation so it, it is not my, uh, my 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 regret uh, but from the since the, the 2004 every edition of Trinale is a time when I organize my solo exhibition accompanying to the Trinale no regarding if I'm a participant or not I would be present I would be uh, from my fr with my friends who come fr from all around the world and for them, I'm showing what I did uh, during past three years. And did, this time I did this, this time. My exhibition was uh, on display from end of May till the end of October. So uh, those who came to, uh, to, to participate in the opening of channel could come and visit me on this exhibition. Now I packed him back, and the next uh, Planet by Me exhibition will be in the Riga in Latvia uh, next year on uh, June, in occasion of a Trenale organized by, uh, by Riga city. Oh. There's um, Susan has asked, how do you hang your pieces? How do they keep their shape? And I was wondering that too with the circles. Not the, not the complete, but you had things that look like a spiral. Yes. So how does it keep its shape? What? Jak do you, jak, jak wieszasz po prostu, żeby był, miały taki kształt? Uh, each of the spiral has uh, behind uh, a wooden uh, ah. construction okay. uh, that is similar to those which has a uh, classical uh, oh. tapestry and um, in my case it is spiral i just cut it from the wood uh, uh, arcs uh, which are connected from three parts because it is quite long and it should be sent in the package to the other places and uh, I I manage I manage to do that. It is it is not uh, keeping to the wall with the, the nails. It is uh, on the wooden frames. Invisible. Invisible. It's magic. It's actually magic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Sometimes we need to keep secrets. Several people have said thank you. 
so much for this presentation. Um, since ATA is really interested in expanding the definitions of tapestry, you've certainly given us a lot to think about. As Fiona Hutchison said here, she says, I love the way your work takes a traditional medium to a totally different level. It is um, nice. It is nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Fiona. <laughs> Maggie, is there anything else that we need to say before we wrap up and let poor Seagun <laughs> off the hook here? No, I don't think so. I also just want to chime in and just say I really enjoyed your presentation and learning more about your work and your process. It's very inspirational. And uh, I think it's really wonderful as we think ahead for a future exhibition that we're organizing in 2024, uh, which is uh, uh, tap beyond tapestry expanded kind of along what Barbara just said, exploring the notion of what tapestry can be. So um, we really appreciate you sharing your work with us. And, you know, hopefully one day uh, we can meet in person. Yes, we'll all go to Woods for your next exhibit. I hope <laughs> I so as well. I would like very much to see you at person. Thank you once again, Barbara and Maggie. Thank you once again, Christina and Justina. It was very... Mm -hmm. Mm, very important for me to be able to 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 meet all of you and to share uh, my my works with you. Thank you very much. You, you did a fantastic job, Wodek. You didn't need any help. <laughs> thank, thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>